Hello, Dog Nation. I'm Brandon Adams. Welcome to this very special broadcast live here tonight from the Marlowe's Tavern in Dunwoody. You see my face and hear my voice all the time, and Jeff Sintel, Connor Riley, very much the same way. But how about the guy sitting to my left here tonight, former Georgia quarterback Jake Fromm. I know that all these Georgia fans are happy about seeing him tonight, almost as happy about that as they are about having the reigning national champions back on the field on Saturday. Jake, let me say to you, thank you so much for spending this time with us. It's uh, been fun to talk to you on Dog Nation Daily the other day and now talk to you here tonight. We appreciate you sharing some of your time with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for having me. Uh, incredible atmosphere. Uh, can't wait for the dogs to play on Saturday. Let's go. Yeah, what is that like for you? Because for so many years, this time of year for you during your Georgia playing years would have been maybe butterflies in the stomach or certainly final preparations. And now you get to see the game as, I guess, kind of a fan in, in some respects. How is the feeling of that different now that you're on the other side of at least your UGA playing career? It's it's relaxing, you know. You're not you're not going through the mental checklist of of this that this play this check versus that. So, uh, man, you can really just take it easy, relax a little bit, uh, and enjoy it for what it is. Have some good time, have some good fellowship, uh, and watch it and enjoy it. I've always been kind of curious about this. When you began your career, and our folks here will remember this. You didn't know you were going in before you did go in because Jacob Eason got hurt at the beginning of the game against Appalachian State. And I'm guessing, had you had a week to sit on that and stew on that, as you would have had the following week against Notre Dame, I'm sure that feeling is very different. When you're kind of plucked in and you begin your Georgia career sooner than maybe you thought you might, I would imagine that was a, a lot to kind of process in a very quick amount of time. No doubt. The only thing I was worried about, you know, when they told me I was going in was where was my helmet? I had no idea where it was at. And so... You know, that took kind of all the thoughts out of it. So, you know, for me, you're exactly right. If I had a whole week to think about it, it could have been a lot different. Uh, instead, I just, you know, prepared like I was the guy, but I think it definitely helps. Hey, just go do it. It just going back to practice and go play football. You know, Jeff, we've been doing Dog Nation here together for quite some time, and when you and I were talking many years ago, we were actually talking about Jake on our show as a recruit at that point in time and being one of those guys that Kirby Smart wanted to bring in and what ended up being a transformational 2017 class for this program. But when you see Jake here now and telling these great stories and looking back on that fun tenure as a, as a UGA player, you know, what do you remember as a recruit and that process that led Jake to come to Georgia? I mean, what's it like for you, having known him for as long as you have, to kind of process where all of this is here now? I think it starts, and you know what I'm probably going to say. It starts with Richard the Count <laughs> and Malik Herring and uh, then Nate McBride and then a dog and then another thing. I mean, everybody's who, raise your hand if you've seen Christmas Commitments. So, oh, my word. I mean, that we were at, I mean, the, the house in the beginning of the house. That's Jake's house. <laughs> and and I, I literally apologize. It's like Dog Nation's version of MTV Cribs. I mean, I, I, I literally like apologize to his mama because like everything that could have went wrong, we were there the whole time. I mean, we were like probably eight hours, nine hours probably. And like, you know, there's a scene where you got Malik Heron back flipping and that's right by Jake's pool. And that was the one you guys all saw on uh, QB1. That was mm -hmm. the one you saw on QB1. But like, the and fun someone else was supposed to be in that video too, right? If memory serves, uh, uh, the linebacker was supposed to be in there. In the yeah, Nate McBride was supposed to be yeah. in the original one, and then Nate couldn't make it, and then Nate was in part two that we did like two weeks later, three weeks later. And uh, I think the funniest part, and uh, uh, super guys, super guys, but like you could already see that they were going to be great teammates. And like, because I remember, you know, Malik, such a character, but Malik was like, like I always say Malik was the most – committed, undecided, uncommitted recruit in the history of Georgia recruiting. <laughs> like, he'd be at the opening, and he'd be dangling, like, Georgia rubber bands in front of somebody. But there's this one story where, like, he's saying – he comes up to me, and, and, and I don't know, this is like um, Leonardo DiCaprio coming up to the director of a movie and saying, you know what, Jeff, what if I do this instead of this? And I think that – and Richard LeCount was right there, and he said, he said, Malik, shut up, man. He says, you're going to let Jeff, you go, Jeff's not going to tackle guys for you. Jeff's not going to make sacks for you. You let Jeff and these people do this video. That's great. And, you know, first of all, Malik Herring is like 6'3", 270. Rich Made the Chiefs this week, by the way. That's awesome. exactly right. Congratulations to Malik, who battled injury and yeah. active member on NFL roster now. That's great to see. And, and, and Richie was like 5'10 and, and 175 pounds. And he literally just like, you know how an alpha, a dog or whatever – like when, when Richard spoke, Malik was right. All right, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. And there's so many, so much fun stuff like this. But like, what I th what I think of Jake is 
you know, Kirby Smart always says the standard. What's the standard? Like, I, I go talk to guys like Arch Manning. I go talk to, like, the next great quarterback target every year for Georgia. And there's just something different about this dude. Like, some coaches, like, oh, no, no. He doesn't do the media, but on Thursdays. What would you have done? What would you have done if somebody, if, if your coach said, no, 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 Jake doesn't do the media <laughs> except on Thursdays? I mean, you can see he's great at this. You can see he's going to be great at whatever he does. But, like, it meant something to him to represent his state, represent his high school, represent his family. And then he was committed to represent Georgia, and he always did it in a first-class manner. Connor, how about a question for Jake? You got one down there? So, 2017, you go to a national title game. Going into 2018, you're clearly the guy. What is Stetson Bennett going through right now after last season, what he went through, and now he's clearly been told, hey, you are the starting quarterback for the team this season? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of similarities in, in situations there. Uh, for me, that first year was, hey, I'm just along for the ride. This is fantastic. Uh, man, this is the greatest year ever in my entire life. You know, fresh out of high school, man, this is what college yeah. is all about. We're winning. Uh, everything's great. Um, and, not, and not that it, it's not, but when you get to that second year, mm -hmm. Everything you did, and everybody wants and, and some more. And so the expectation is there, uh, whereas it wasn't really in the first. And so uh, just how to manage that, how to uh, use it to fuel you in certain situations, and then also knowing, hey, when to, to let a load off and let some other people, you know, your good group you have around you to, to help kind of carry that burden for you. So, um, you know, as long as Stetson has the right people around him, I think he's going to do uh, fantastic. I think he's going to do a fantastic job this year and, and definitely look forward to it. As a quarterback and someone who understands the game, do you like Todd Munkin? What do you see from him as an offensive coordinator of the system that George is running? I think the results speak for themselves. They've been big offensive production year over year over the course of his two years as offensive coordinator. But as someone who knows a little bit more about what's going on under the hood, what do you see from the Todd Munkin offense? Yeah, I, I think it speaks for itself of utilizing the playmakers that he has. You know, Brock Bowers. Um, I remember watching the Alabama game. Uh, two years ago where they hit uh, James Cook on a yeah. slow goal on the outside. You know, he's going to put his playmakers in the right spot uh, to get those right matchups, to make plays, and we're just going to bank on that percentage of uh, our guys winning against your guys uh, more times than not. How much fun is it right now because of the kinds of weapons Georgia does have, these first or running backs to catch the ball out of the backfield? That's what James Cook was. I believe that's what he's going to be in the NFL. That's what Kenny McIntosh seems to be right now, the dadgum deepest tight end room you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. I mean – once again, as someone who kind of understands what it takes to play this game at the SEC level, the, the wealth of weapons and the unique characteristics that these you know, position groups in particular, running back and tight end, that must be uh, kind of an interesting thing for you to see. Yeah, I mean, it's, an, it's incredible. You know, you just kind of pick and choose. You know, who, who do we want to use this week? Who do we want to, to be our decoy? Um, but, you know, it's, it's also kind of going back to Stetson a little bit of the expectation that is there. You know, the expectation there is for Coach Munkin as well. You know, hey, uh, proof's in the pudding of, of last year, but we've got to build on it, got to get better and uh, make sure we, we give Brock Bowers the ball and, and find who the next guy is. Jeff, how about another question for Jake? I, I got two. One, two. Um, first one is when you got in the film room after that first start against App State, how quickly did you, you know, so prepared he always, how hard were you on yourself? How hard were the coaches on you? Like, did you have an early bust and you're like, hey, coach, just roll with it. I'm just, I'm just playing on fumes here. What was that? What was that first series as a dog like yeah, in the film were, room? Yeah, there were definitely a few things like, oh, wow, you know, that looks good. Or um, I, I definitely gave, you know, Javon Wims like a huge hug afterwards, you yeah. know, of, you know, going back and watching the film of my first touchdown, you know, where. That, that was really a prayer that I sent up and, and let Javon Williams just kind of go up and, and do his thing. So I uh, definitely had to give him, you know, a big hug, a high five, and a dinner on that one. But, um, you know, I, I was hard on myself. And then also, hey, let's look at it. Let's crush it. Let's flush it. And you know, we had that big one that following week in, in Notre Dame. So getting on to that one. So you saw the scrimmage. I know you were there for the Letterman scrimmage, right? Uh, can you just kind of – what? let's pick your brain about your thoughts about the quarterbacks. I know – there's the youngest guy there, Gunner. You have a history with him through Charlie and your families. What do you think about Georgia's quarterbacks? Maybe, maybe start with Gunner first and work your way up. Yeah, uh, man, love Gunner. Uh, Gunner's the guy who prepares. Uh, I'm in the QB room right now. A little bit, I'll tell anybody, you know, working on my classes. And so I, I get to see who kind of comes in and, and out a little bit. So, uh, man, Gunner's there uh, a lot. Gunner's there a ton. Uh, you love him, love his family. Uh, then you have Brock. 
you know, Brock is a, a bigger guy. Brock is an athletic guy. Uh, I think he has all the talent in the world. I think for him, it's just kind of building on um, kind of his mental game of understanding the offense, understanding what Coach Munkin wants to get accomplished uh, week to week and, and throughout the game plan. Uh, and I think Carson, Carson, you know, when you look at Carson, very prototypical uh, NFL quarterback. You know, you, you see a guy who's uh, a bigger guy with a big arm, uh, not as mobile compared to the other guys on the roster, but I think if he can do what he does better than the other guys, then, you know, there maybe could be an opportunity for him. And then uh, then you have Stetson. You know, Stetson, uh, he's unfazed. Uh, doesn't matter what, what anyone says, good or bad. He's just going to go out, be Stet, uh, and play ball. So along those lines, the big crowd of Georgia fans we have here tonight obviously want Georgia to be able to keep these quarterbacks, hold on to them. We know that in the nation this weekend, 48% of the quarterbacks that are going to be starting college football started their careers somewhere else than where they're starting for right now. It's a, it's a good stat. Uh, obviously, is, so many transfer quarterbacks yeah. are out there right now. So, you know, Georgia's asking, you know, Carson Beck to be patient. It's asking Brock Vandergriff to be patient. Even Gunnar Stockton, you know, maybe be patient here for a little bit too, even though he just got here. You know, what would be your message there uh, along those lines of, Maybe sometimes the grass, not always being greener somewhere else, but obviously players want to play. How would you communicate to players who are obviously dealing with that very real choice about their future? Honestly, you know, coming from my experience, my perspective, it's really tough to honestly relate, you know, because I had the opportunity to go in and play so early. Honestly, who would be a great uh, perspective and opinion would be Stetson. Yeah. You know, who, you know, came in with me, uh, sat for two years, went and got a scholarship and, and comes back and wins the national championship. That would be a, a great perspective. But I think for them, uh, with NIL the way it is, uh, the way the transfer portal is, you know, it's easy to go want to be somewhere else, to be wanted somewhere else. Uh, I, I think the guys in that group, in that room, are some guys who love Georgia football for what it is. Uh, they're really bought in. Uh, I, I mean, I personally think those guys are, are there to stay, and, and I think it's going to be a, a great battle uh, next year. We'll let Connor Riley ask a question here in a moment. I want to remind folks, we're live here tonight at the Marlowe's Tavern in Dunwoody. Uh, the folks here have always been so hospitable to us tonight, no different. Delicious food, great time. So many great Georgia fans enjoying themselves. And this really leads into a great weekend for us with our dog nation. Duck Hunt to tailgate on Saturday from downtown Atlanta. Huge collection of sponsors who've helped make this such a great event for us. We're so excited about Saturday and really happy to be able to kick this off tonight with the uh, Marlowe's Tavern here in Dunwoody. So to everyone who's made the Dog Nation Duck Hunt possible, thank you so much for that. And obviously, thank you for tuning in tonight as part of our show here live on Dog Nation with former Georgia quarterback Jake Fromm. Yeah, so after the national championship game, Kirby is giving a press conference, and he makes sure to thank guys like Jake, Nick Chubb, DeAndre Swift. And I know Richard was at the title game. Lawrence Cager was at the title game. DeAndre Swift was at the title game. What was January 10th, 2022, excuse me, like for you? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I, uh, I was with the Giants at the time, and uh, I was in an extended stay hotel, you know, by myself, uh, waiting to the have... The glamorous life of an NFL you know, quarterback. Let me tell you. Um, and uh, we had exit meetings uh, the next day, so it was really kind of tough for, for me to get out and get back, you know, and that, uh, that private jet would have been a little yeah. expensive. So, um, <laughs> we were, hey, we, Andrew was there. We were trying to get Andrew, you know, like, hey, Andrew, you know, we really we need yeah. to get there, you know. So, uh, um, you know, that, that was tough. But, man, it was, it, was, it was awesome. I got to sit there. I really got to, to watch it. Um, digest it by myself, and, and man, it was awesome. I, you know, at the end, when, when Keely makes the pick, uh, I stand up, I go to high five, there's no one there, but you know, it didn't matter. I, I get on the phone of my boys, call Charlie Warner, my roommate, uh, Georgia, and uh, just, just reminisce a little bit, you know, and, and it was awesome as just lifelong uh, Georgia fan as I was, my family was. Um, and everybody else here, you know, it's, it, was, it was a big deal. When you were on the show with me the other day, I asked you about this. This is important to me. You guys feel like you were a part of this, right? Because I don't know that Georgia does what it did last year, if not for what you guys had done there in 2017. It was a big breakthrough for Georgia. Georgia hadn't been the college ball playoff yet, and to come that close to winning a national championship, I know how much that night must have hurt when you were that close to winning it and you fell just a little bit short. But a lot of things in life are about taking steps, right? And Georgia took a big step in January of 2018, making that playoff, winning the SEC, and I think it laid the groundwork for the final steps we're taking this year. I hope that you guys do feel like you were a part of this because I think there's no doubt that you were. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I, you know, I, I definitely do. I think it was about uh, building a culture, building a standard uh, there at Georgia. Uh, you know, it starts with Coach Smart, you know, with the leadership and the guys coming down, and uh, I think everybody bought in, uh, knew what we wanted to do, knew what we wanted to accomplish, and 
Uh, it was just we were knocking on the door. Uh, we were beating it down and uh, eventually had to fall. Jeff, how about for you? A question for Jake here. So I think everybody sees uh, a lot of television. They see the blow-ups. They see the, you know, Kirby when he's mad, Kirby when there's a bad read, Kirby when something's going wrong. Um, Kirby I, when he's happy, still sort of seems like he's a little bit mad. What, what, would, what, would be, what would be your advice? I don't know. Maybe there's a family friend that's going to go play quarterback for Georgia. When they ask you, Jake, what's it like to be the quarterback for Kirby Smart? What, what's yeah. your answer there? Yeah, I mean, you just, you know, you know going into it, you're just, you're going to get it. You're going to get ripped. It's just, it's just part of signing up for the deal. You know, I, I remember in spring practice, uh, gosh, could have second, third practice. It, it wasn't far into spring practice. And uh, we're doing two-minute drill, and the twos go. I go, and it was like on the third play, I get sacked. And he stops the entire two-minute drill to single me out and rip me a new one in front of everybody. <laughs> so, you know, I, I never forgot it. Uh, me, I, I always just want to do better next time and, and, and do the right thing. And um, so, I, I, you know, you, you knew the ripping was inevitable, you know, but at least you, you knew you did your best and you could just sit there and be like, yes, coach, and, and, and take it, you know. Is there <laughs> – I know you saw the great answer. I know you saw the uh, scrimmage. Is there a guy that you see that's a toy in this offense that you would have loved to, loved to play with at Georgia? Who's a guy? I know you're probably gonna name seven of them, but yeah, like, uh, who's a guy that just I love to throw that guy? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, Brock, Brock's incredible, at, and and I mean, really, there, there's so many guys you could single out, but it's just so hard when you're standing on the sideline to not look at Darnell Washington. Yeah. You know, you're just sitting there and you're like. Oh my goodness, he is really that much bigger. Always open, than, right? Than everybody else. Throw that and, fade ball up there. You know, I, I, you know, going going back to you know the QB room and, and Gunner being in there a bunch. You know, we're, we're sitting there and he's I'm doing my class and Gunner's slipping through practice and I'm really not paying attention to class. I'm, I'm watching what he's watching and he's like, you know, Gunner's is Gunner talking. You know. We should just, and every time we get inside the five, just throw up three fades to Darnell. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I, you know. Hopefully, I don't get Gunner in trouble for you know for saying that word. But you know, I mean, but the argument can be made. You know, mm -hmm. just start him in. You know, get into a, a big tight end package. You know, a, a fourteen personnel. Fourteen personnel. Get into fourteen. You, you spread everybody out, and then you look. You see, all right, where, where's my matchup at? You know, you got. Brock, Darnell, Oscar, and and you know you, you name the next guy. Yeah. You know it doesn't matter because we got them. Yeah, you know, Gilbert, yeah, yeah it could be anybody. Brett, Ryland, uh, a receiver. It doesn't it doesn't matter. And you know even a running back. Put Kendall out there for that matter. You know yeah. and say all right, where, where's my matchup at? And just go take it. I remember Carson was telling me when he was recruiting Darnell. He's like, man, if I get to play with that guy, because he's like, you may be covered. You may have him covered at seven feet, eight feet. You don't have him covered at eleven feet up there. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a DB that can go cover him, cover a snatch a ball with Darnell 11 feet. Well, I don't live in Athens, so I don't get to go to practice as much as guys like Connor do. You're missing or, out, man. Yeah, I know. I wish yeah, I was. Yeah, listen, uh, Mike Griffith there as well. But I was at practice a couple Saturdays ago, and when you see Darnell, it's – I mean, you know how tall he is. Obviously, you, you know the measurables. It's shocking to see him on a practice field. I mean, these are gigantic men, and he stands so much taller than all of them. And, you know, it's not just his height. It's the size there as well. It's almost like he's a human Photoshop. He yeah. just gets a little bit bigger every time you see him. Yeah. I mean, the, the height is one thing, but it, it's not like he's a, a skinny basketball player out there. No, I mean, he's he's thick. And, and when you know, going back and watching film of, of him run blocking some guys, I mean, yeah. he, he, he is he's doing work on those guys and putting them to the ground. So... You know, not only is he a menace, you know, in the in the passing game in a, in a matchup. I mean, he he he's a guy who's gonna gonna block his heart out there in the run game as well. Tell us about a a from eye catcher on defense. Anybody that you saw that caught your eye about? I don't know if I'd pick on that guy. So uh, so you got Keely on one side and it's Malachi on the other side. Kamari Lassiter. Kamari, that's it. Sorry, Excuse number me. three. Kamari. Malachi's yes. the safety. Yeah, yeah. So it's Kamari at corner, yep. and uh, I, I saw Kamari there in the scrimmage make an unbelievable interception on a post route, and just kind of uh, he, he flips his hips and he, he gets going into his route and basically runs the post for the receiver, uh, wow. picks it off, and the only person you know, I mean, I, I, that, that was just an, an incredible play, and and flips it and starts going back the other way, get a quick whistle blowing, and and I would have loved to see him you know take it back for six, but I, I mean, there, there's not too many guys out there that's athletic enough to make that play, and and he sure did. So we're going to end our live broadcast here soon and give some of our folks who are here in person with us at uh, Marlowe's Tavern a chance to ask Jake some more questions. But I do want to ask you this. When you walked up here a moment ago, I introduced you as a guy that was 
undefeated in your career against the Florida Gators. You really had a lot of great moments against Georgia rivals. Yeah, how about this? I mean, around here we believe that good Georgia fans are Gator haters, so beating up on Florida is always a lot of fun for us. But is that the kind of thing, I mean, being a Georgian, playing for the University of Georgia, you know, when you're playing, you, every game's the same, right? You know, one game at a time. But as a, you know, Georgian playing for Georgia, did you have a special appreciation when you go out there and, and beat a Florida or even an Auburn or Tennessee? You sang Rocky Top in Knoxville in 2019. Like, how much more special was that for you to have a big game like that against a, a UGA rival, something you did a lot of in your Georgia career? Yeah, I mean, so... One, uh, it, it was awesome to go down to Jacksonville, and, and it's a different atmosphere down there. Um, anytime you, you beat up on those guys, Florida, Auburn, Tennessee, uh, man, it was just a, a great feeling. Man, you feel like you did your job. And uh, somehow or another, you know, whether you had it going into college or not, uh, you just muster up a, a dislike, you know, for those colors. Amen. Uh, those guys. And, uh, yeah, you know, you just you, – it comes it comes from somewhere, you know, and – um, but, you know, you, you go out, you play, and, uh, and the job's done when you on the flight home. Well, Jake, we're so happy to have you here tonight. It's been such a fun broadcast, and I know a lot of these folks are excited about having you here in person there as well. So we're going to sign off live on video, but if you ever get a chance to be with us live in a Marlowe's Tavern like this, including the one we are here tonight in Dunwoody, beautiful night here on the lawn, great food, great beverage. You owe it to yourself to do that. We've had folks who have traveled in from a long way away to be here with us here tonight. So we're very thankful for all that, and if you can't be here, we're certainly thankful that you've tuned in on video. I'll see you tomorrow morning on Dog Nation Daily. See as many of you as I can in uh, Atlanta on Saturday for our Dog Nation duck hunt tailgate. So for Jake Fromm, the entire Dog Nation team, thank you so much for tuning in on video, and we'll see you on Saturday, everybody. Go, go, go. Go, go.